boxing match between the strongest. It's a complete slugfest where previously Gojo would come out on top in the clashes but this time round things are not so easy. Yuta is trying to adjust to Gojo's curse technique whilst throwing Sukuna down like a sack and whipping his ass. However, Yuta confirms that he can only use Limitless aside from Kenjaku's brain hopping. Rika is still with his dead body and he can't use Copy which is why the six eyes are so vital. In chapter 261, Shoko explained that copying Limitless without them would be useless and since it's a physical attribute rather than a technique, the only option left for Yuta was to take over Gojo's body and learn on the spot. But this is where the problems only begin. Yuta is struggling fighting for his life with Gojo's long limbs which is why he completely misses the mark. Come on Yuta, we're here for you. Wait, what else? is long. I'll pass. But Yuta notes that Sukuna lost his left arms, so he cannot use the world cutting slash. Hence, other than domain amplification, there's no other means for the king to overcome Limitless. This is the only reason why Yuta thinks he has an advantage and can deal enough damage to Sukuna so that he wins the domain clash which would let Unlimited Void hit or a purple. Keep in mind that this would game end the fight. Even Sukuna admitted in chapter 230 that his win condition depended on getting rid of Unlimited Void. And later in chapter 234 that Gojo's purple at point blank range would be fatal. However, the red flags for Yuta's death just don't stop. Gege wants to make us feel pain because Yuta is having a hard time using Gojo's Limitless. In the one month time skip, he swapped with Gojo using Ui Ui's technique to train, but that only occurred once due to its limits being twice a month. The other swap was with Yuji so he could learn reverse curse technique and shrine. Now in a flashback, we see Gojo scolding Yuta for his inconsistent curse energy usage. This would be around the fifth time this has occurred throughout the series. One of those times specifically would be in chapter 261 where Sensei admitted that he's been on his ass about that. So even though he has more curse energy reserves than Gojo, Yuta uses it in a inefficient way which takes away another big advantage from him in a fight against the king of curses who now matches his reserves. Hence, even though Yuta tries to use Limitless, it massively fails, surprising even Sukuna. Despite that, Yuta brings up how demanding Limitless is on the body. In his and everyone else's eyes, Gojo made this technique look flawless and all powerful, but it is impossibly difficult to master. This makes Yuta think about how much hard work went into perfecting Limitless before Gojo pronounced himself as the strongest sorcerer. Like this sneak peek we got of Gojo slowly perfecting it at 16 years old in front of Geto and Shoko, it was only part of the actual process and the six eyes was essential. Ladies and gentlemen, this pretty much answers Geto's most prolific question in the entire series. Are you the strongest because you're Satoru Gojo or are you Satoru Gojo because you're the strongest? Now we know it was in fact Gojo's own talents and hard work that made him the most powerful six eyes limitless user in sorcerer history. His red alone was capable of one shotting Mahoraga whereas a previous six eyes user died to the ten shadows technique with an untamed version of the same Shikigami. Think about it. Yuta is even more blessed than Gojo in terms of genetics. This is due to his lineage being from the Fujiwara and the Michizane family. Yet he needs more time even whilst having Gojo's memories to crack the code faster and struggles to keep up. But speaking on that topic, shout out to Shad's manga only on X for catching the small details about Kinjaku's hair and attire in this chapter. Take a look at both of these panels on screen. His attire with Kashimo matches what Uru remembers about the Fujiwara clan. Plus, Uru only accuses Yuta of being part of the Fujiwara only after he questions her about not having a lover or friends to care for, which seems quite coincidental since the Sugawara and Fujiwara clan clearly had a Romeo and Juliet situation going on where they banged to make Yuta their descendant 
Brandon despite being enemies. This proves Kenjaku was prevalent in ancient Japan even 600 years ago, with his strategic brain hopping to make this occur. Gege, please cook! Because this also matches the actual history of Japan. The Fujiwara clan prospered since ancient times and dominated the imperial court until the Meiji Restoration in 1868, which completely matches the timeline of Jujutsu Kaisen, as Uro knows about them as well. Basically, in the past, the Fujiwara clan became jealous and conspired to convince the emperor that Michizane was plotting against them. He was essentially the gojo of his generation, extremely talented, well liked and very powerful. However, they succeeded in getting Michizane banished where they stopped him from teaching, working and being influential despite his innocence. As a result, Michizane became a vengeful spirit upon death. Yeah, just like in Jujutsu Kaisen where Kyoto suffered calamities. Now we only know of one person who would try to use such a drift between clans to his advantage, which he did even in modern times, taking over the Kamo clan and destroying the three major families. He must have moved within both clans to add fuel to the fire, as well as obtain more influence or reach. That means Yuta might be the result of Kenjaku meddling with these clans. If you didn't know that, make sure to smash the like button and hit the notification bell.